here is my take on 80s home computer magic. As a kid I was blown away by pixel graphics and games like Space Invaders, an alien world to be explored. That's why in this playlist I present my dream home computer, the Minimal 64. To me it's the shortest path from TTL to Space Invaders. In this video we are going to look into the hardware of the Minimal 64 home computer. Let's connect the machine to the VGA monitor and fire it up. We will take off where we've left in the introductory video, so if you haven't seen it I recommend watching it first. The link is in the description. Let's briefly remind ourselves what the Minimal 64 home computer is all about. It is the result of my 3 year hobby project and with this video I'll release the design into the public for you to build it too. It's free for any non-commercial use, you'll find the link to the GitHub repository in the description. As you can see we are presented with a capable DOS environment, fully bitmapped graphics, a native development toolchain and even some classic games here. Let us get a feel for this CPU architecture. Here is a block diagram. The legend up here shows the color coding of the various parts of the CPU. The control signals, functional blocks, their subcomponents, data lines and the main bus. We can identify five functional blocks here. The control logic, the arithmetic and logic unit, a program counter, memory featuring RAM, video RAM and flash and an I.O. section. They are all interconnected by a single 8-bit data bus shown as a dark bold line in the center. The thin black arrows represent individual connections and also show the involved number of bits. The arithmetic and logic unit or ALU features two 8-bit general purpose data registers A and B. It can output the result of one out of four different operations back onto the bus. Add, subtract, bitwise logical AND and bitwise logical OR. The IO section features an 8-bit universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter, in short a UART or serial interface, and a PS2 keyboard input. We have 512 kilobytes of flash memory and 64K of RAM, of which 16K are used as video RAM. The 16-bit address register together with an 8-bit bank register activates a specific memory location for read and write access. The control unit itself consists of a 7-bit register holding the current instructions opcode, a 3-bit flex status register and a 4-bit counter stepping through the current instructions microcode. For each instruction the microcode is stored in the control ROM. At any given time the control ROM outputs a valid set of 24 signals, as shown in red. And that's feeding back as control inputs to the various components we've already discussed. The whole circuit is clocked at 8 MHz. But every fourth clock cycle the VGA section takes control over the RAM for video output. Thus the actual clock rate of the CPU is 6 MHz. For a more in-depth explanation I recommend diving into the 30 plus pages of the Minimal 64 user manual. Again the link is in the description. Let's now go and download the KiCad schematics from the GitHub repo and identify the actual implementation of the sections we've just discussed. But don't worry, we won't go into any circuit details in this video. It took me a long time to optimize every aspect of the design and how everything plays together. I think it cannot be simplified any further, which after all was my major project goal. But if you have an idea on how to further reduce the chip count without just integrating logic, please let me know in the comments. Now on the right we can click and see how the A and B registers wire to the ALU with its arithmetic and logic sections, as well as the 16-bit program counter. On the left we have the memory section with flash, SRAM, bank register and address register. And up here we have the serial receiver and transmitter and the PS2 interface. And in the center we can see the details of the control logic, outputting its 24 control signals from its three 8-bit flash ROMs. 
let us also briefly look into the VGA circuit, which I'm kind of proud of, since it turned out so minimalistic. Time sharing RAM between VGA and CPU at a rate of 8 MHz made a carefully designed dedicated section necessary, I've called it global signals. All these signals are derived from a single 16 MHz crystal oscillator. All this I've put together onto a nice and compact PCB. The finished board should look about like this. And after ordering the PCB and 4 hours of soldering, we hold the actual hardware in our hands. As you can see, I've socketed all ICs on my PCB. However, this is really only necessary for the big 4 flash ICs, since we need to program them externally. So let's do that next. We have already received their binary flash images together with the KiCad schematics. We need three smaller images of the control ROMs and the big SSD image. As in many of my previous videos, I'm going to use my trusted DIY flash programmer for that. I've made a video about it a while ago, but for this video, I've given the software a major overhaul. Now it writes and verifies binary images of any size you throw at it just like a breeze. If you are interested in building your own, I'll put a link for you down in the description. Finally, we are set up for a test run. We can power the board via this dedicated 5 volt connector here on the right or simply use the 5 volts provided by the serial breakout board on the left hand side. Just don't connect both supplies at the same time. I'm using my serial breakout board today since I'll hook it up anyway. <music> Yeah, everything seems to work just fine using my old PS2 keyboard here, uh, by the way, with German layout. Hmm, but how to convert to the US layout of my nicer mini PS2 keyboard? We'll have to give the OS a little update for that via the UART interface. Let us go to the repos, programs, ASM section and open the file keyboardus.txt. It says we should go to the source file os.asm and replace the PS2 table with this code snippet here. Ok, now I'm going to open up a console window and assemble the modified OS code. Let me just copy this Intel hex output here and launch a terminal connection. Then we type receive on the minimal and simply paste the code into the terminal window and from there into the minimal's RAM. Now by typing flash enter on the minimal, the new code is finally copied to the OS's flash memory location. Et voila! US keyboard layout. Let me point out here that the minimal 64 requires an old school dumb PS2 keyboard that is sending plain keystroke datagrams only. Some newer devices insist on a two-way handshake prior to sending their data. The Minimal 64 won't be able to do that. 
As I mentioned at the beginning of the video series, the Minimal 64 is my dream home computer. To me it's the perfect blend of nostalgia, simplicity and power, bringing back the excitement and wonder of the 80s computing era. The textbook TTL-based architecture of the Minimal 64 offers a unique opportunity to dive deep into the inner workings of computers. So I hope you enjoyed the short journey through the architecture and configuration of the Minimal 64. I would love to hear about your experience building and programming your own Minimal 64 home computer. As always, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll do my best to help out. Take care. Bye.